Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm going to talk about the jet streams. The jet streams are vital for our climate and weather systems. They separate cold, dry air in the Arctic from warm, humid air in the south. They guide storms. They, as the Arctic warming accelerates, the jet streams are slowing down and become wavier and becoming wavier. And this is increasing the frequency severity and duration of extreme weather events like torrential rains causing floods and droughts. So I've talked about how the jet stream, the troughs of the jet stream have gone as far as the equator and they crossed the equator and met up with southern hemisphere jet streams. I've talked about how there's been times when the ridges of the jet streams have reached up into the Arctic in the middle of the winter, bringing temperatures above zero, bringing heat up there. I'm going to go through um, Earth Null School over the last few months and give you examples of where this has been happening. Um, and I'll also show you, not only is the jet stream crossing the North Pole, going directly across the North Pole, but there's also behavior, there's been at least two or three times in the last few months when the jet stream has gone strongly directly across the South Pole. So all of these things are key in the climate system because more and more heat is being transferred up into the Arctic, for example, and the Antarctic when the jet stream behaves like this. And also more and more cold air is moving from the poles, either the Arctic or Antarctic, to lower latitude. So we're getting an equalization of temperature with latitude, which um, has huge effects on, for example, how we grow food on this planet. So let's have a look at uh, some of these details here. Okay, so if you just go, if you just Google Google Images, open it up, look at jet streams, what you can see here is all of these different images. So here we have the subtropical jets curving around the northern hemisphere on, and also in the southern hemisphere. They're about 30 degrees. They're about a third the way up, 30 degrees north, 30 degrees south. We have the polar jets here. They're circling at about 60 degrees or so. And these are set up because at the equator, hot air rises and then it moves, it moves uh, towards the poles and drop stack down and we get the Hadley cell here and then it's like a gear this air is going down it pulls air down here we get this feral cell the air is going up here the air is coming up here and we get a polar cell here and where these two where the Hadley cell and the feral cell meet we have the subtropical jets here and where the feral cell and polar cell meet we have the um, jet stream here okay the polar jet Okay, um, this is goes up. This is about 17 kilometers high. This is about seven kilometers high. It's called the, the okay, this is the troposphere, the lower atmosphere, and this is the stratosphere up above. So the borderline, you know, when you get a large um, cumulus, uh, cumulonimbus storm cloud, it's got the anvil shape at the top. Um, that's the division, it's called the tropopause, the division between the lower atmosphere and the troposphere where weather happens and the stratosphere above that. So here's another image of the jet stream. Um, this is, a, I'll just go down here a little bit. Okay, here's some other views here, a subtropical jet stream, polar jet stream, cold air, cold and dry air above, warm and humid air below. It acts as a wall to sort of separate it out. Here's a, a, an image from Earth Null School. Okay, um, there's explanations here. So, you know, go have a look at it yourself if you're not clear of the importance of the jet stream. This is an image where it's actually the trough in the northern hemisphere has come down and it's joining with the southern hemisphere. This is an image from that video I pointed out um, which I which I put in about June of of 2016 and it went viral. I think it's about 450,000 views or something. This is a ridge of the jet stream. This is a trough, just like an ocean wave. So in the ridge, it has access. You get the 
warm humid air coming up here to high latitude you have cold dry air coming down south to lower latitude so you get a mixing of the air okay so have a look google it and have a look i also have a look here at you know why do jet streams form for example and it gives you some different images and it explains some uh, that you'll see you'll recognize a lot of images that are similar but there's different ones this is type of the speeds that you see in the core of the jet stream 140 miles an hour 80 miles an hour very high speed winds they're named because they move at the altitude of the the jets fly here's another image which you've seen and here's another image so a big strong trough here and so on so you can tell a lot about weather you know, if you go to the weather forecast in your local paper and you see a weather map, you'll also see the location of the jet stream position. And that can explain to you, you know, if here, for example, very cold and snowy and very hot and dry in these regions. Now, what have they been doing in the last month? So just Google Earth Null School. Okay, we'll click on it here. It opens it up here. This is a menu here. And if you just you can go back three hours, back a day, forward three hours, and so on. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go back to about two months. I'm going to go back to August. So I'm just going to type an 8 in here for August and select this. Okay. And now we're August 2nd. Okay. So we've got August 2nd here. Let's have a look at the Arctic first. So we'll go up here. Okay, Greenland's here. I'm gonna zoom in and try to click on this point here in the crosshairs. You see the crosshairs? I'll click on here and 89.96 degrees north. So we're pretty close to the North Pole. I'll zoom out with my mouse and uh, let's have a look. So, so I'll just now I'll just advance. Uh, I wanna look at the jet stream. So I wanna go to 250 this is 250 millibar pressure, which is about the height of the jet stream. I'm looking at the winds and the air. Okay, now I'm going to advance. Um, so what you can see is, let's have a look and see whether we get any of the purple crossing the North Pole. So I'm just going to cycle quickly through, and you can kind of see what's going on. The progression, the jet streams are moving around the Earth, and the, if there's ridges and ridges and troughs they're actually they progress around the earth because of the rotation of the earth okay so i'm just going to zoom up here i'm advancing three hours so you can see this guy you know this guy is getting close to the north pole but not quite okay let's keep going and see what happens okay so you can see how the whole thing is you know like changing spaghetti if you like here we go this guy's approaching the north pole here doesn't quite make it. I'm keep, I'll keep going. Here we go. Okay, you can see what happened. So this ridge here um, worked, strengthened, and it's worked its way up, and it's actually crossing the North Pole here. Okay, so there'll be warm, dry air underneath, and there'll be colder Arctic air above. Okay, so this happened August 17th, 2 o'clock local time. That would be uh, 6 UTC, which is Greenwich Mean Time, essentially. So you can get your, dis your, for, your, can get your time relative to Greenwich, and you can get your, your time. Um, the local time would be the time if you were there. Okay, so, uh, so we've crossed, he we're, we've got uh, a, a crossing of the North Pole here. Let's keep going. Now this is moving off. And there's a, it's brightening up, so there's another extremes, and you can see 117 kilometer hour right there. At uh, that's 250 millibar, which is the height of the jet stream. I said it's about seven kilometers in the Arctic, and we'll we're, we'll keep cycling along here. Okay, what's going to be the next one to hit it? Okay, there's some. There's a weaker one here. It's still in the green. Not quite as strong, but let's keep going. Here we go. There's some red coming up. Okay, so I'll keep going. You can see how these loops and things are, are crossing. So we're into September now. And we'll just keep going. 
There we go, as we got a strong ridge coming up this way, coming clear across the North Pole on September 6th. Okay, so it happened again, and then it actually clear, goes clear across. And there's another one here, hitting it, September 9th. We'll keep going, high winds here, just missing it, September 10th. Okay, and let's keep going and we'll see what happens. There we go. Um, there's a small loop here, a whirl, with 134 kilometer an hour winds passing and we'll keep going here up to the present. So we're still in September. That guy, that big strong um, guy just misses. And here we go. This guy's coming down. This one's coming up and just missing. See, in general, the jet streams would not be, before, the jet streams would not be this as wavy to reach and do what it's doing. So this one is, here's a very strong 175 kilometer an hour jet stream going clear across the, um, the, the North Pole on September 29th. Okay, so let's keep going here. Whoops. And now we're going here we go, so it's moving along and it's encompassing the North Pole, which is at the green spot. And now we can go out into the future a bit and see what's happening. Okay, so let's have a look now at the South Pole. So let's loop around. Here's the South Pole. Okay, let's here right here. I'm just gonna move this and try to put my pointer here. 89.87 south, see if I can get a bit better. Of course, if you zoom in and then try to find it, you can be better off. Okay, so we're pretty close to the South Pole here. So in fact, we got a crossing here. The jet stream is crossing the South Pole. Um, October 4th is projected. So in a few days, it's projected to. Now let's go back and uh, let's go back to two months here to 08. Okay, September, or August 4th, rather. Okay, August 4th, and let's have a look. Let's do the same sort of thing. So just advance around. Now this, you'll notice as I advance, is moving this way, because this is at the bottom of the planet, and the jet streams move from west to east on both the north, north and south, of course, because of the rotation of the Earth. The Coriolis force deflects things to the right in the northern hemisphere, to the left in the southern hemisphere, so we're looking at the bottom of the Earth, so things are moving this way, okay? So that's why the rotation, you know, is, you know, we're looking up, it's moving this way, which means it's moving this way, which looks the, is the, looks the opposite from what I was showing you in the Arctic. So let's have a look here. You can see that there we go, getting convergence of the jets there. And is this going to reach it? Not quite. Is this going to reach it? Not quite. See, these ridges and troughs are so strong that there we go. We get high, the jet stream, has the, the, the waviness. So August 14th, you know, high winds, jet stream, we're crossing the South Pole. And you can see, continue on. So this is happening more and more often now. There we go, another streak coming across here on August 19th, and I'll just keep going around for you. You can see the motion and try this. I recommend, really recommend you try this yourself. You know, it helps to learn the techniques from the different links and things that are available to let you learn more about the planet and how it's changing. Okay, so here we go. September 3rd, we're at Okay, there we go. This is reaching it here. This is, it's, in, it's, in, it's almost got it there, sort of moved all around it. This is September of 12th and 13th and 14th. Okay, I'm just clicking on the three hour advancement each time. Okay, and there you can see it going September 22nd, and then we did have it on October 4th, remember when I opened this video up, so we'll just go to there and see how that's arrived at. September 27th, there we go there, September 30th, and so on. You can see, or 